Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A pickup from Mitsubishi, the Strata Athlete Black Series, and a subcompact SUV from Volkswagen, the T-Cross SE. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two mid-size SUVs, the Kia Sorento 2.2 SX 4x2 AT versus the Toyota Fortuner GRS 2.8 4x4 AT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about the Boost Controller. And together, with the latest news and development of the local auto industry, we shall have the highlights of the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is all of focus, and we'll be right back after this short break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS, bring on the thrill. The Mitsubishi Strata Athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Mitsubishi. In this edition of Car Review, we take a look at the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete Black Series. There's something about black that appeals to many, be it clothes, accessories, and vehicles. Mitsubishi is apparently tapping into this by coming up with the Black Series Special Edition variants of its model lineup that includes the Expander, the Montero, and the Strada. The Black Series models sport Mitsubishi Special Jet Black Nika. By the way, the Black Series also comes in white. But here we are concentrating on the Black Series featuring Jet Black Nika that projects a tough and aggressive yet a sleek look that Mitsubishi is going for. This is especially true in the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete Black Series Edition. All in black, the Mitsubishi Strada Athlete looks even more, well, athletic. The black trimmings on the front dynamic shield grille, the side mirrors with turn signals and styling bar. The blacked out rear spoiler and front bumpers as well as the 18-inch black alloy rims wrapped by 26560 or 18 tires all make the Strada Athlete stand out even more rumbling down the road or even while just parked. The side decals that extend from the rear door to the tailgate also make the Strada Athlete all the more an attention magnet. The blacked out Strada Athlete looms even larger with its listed dimensions, 5,305mm long, 1,815mm wide and 1,795mm tall, with a 3,000mm long wheelbase and 220mm minimum ground clearance. For those who'd like to know, the interior dimensions of the Strada Athlete pickup bed are as follows. 1,520 millimeters long, 1,470 millimeters wide, and 475 millimeters high. It also comes in cargo hooks. Mitsubishi rolled out the Black Series editions of the Strata Athlete 4-Wheel Drive AT and Strata Athlete 2-Wheel Drive. Some exterior features shared by both include daytime running lights, LED headlamps and leveling device, LED-type rear combination lamps, front undercover, front skin plate, front and rear fog lamps, high mount stop lamp, door sash, Variable intermittent windshield wipers with washer, front towing hook. The Black Series Edition features the same interior features and trim of the Strada Athlete. Orange and black leather upholstery with the Athlete part for the seat and trims. Leather wrapped orange stitching on gear shift and the parking brake lever that match the door trim. The four spoke steering wheel tilts and telescope is wrapped by leather with orange stitching and comes with switches and buttons for audio and cruise control. The driver's seat power just eight ways. The front seats have adjustable headrests. The rear bench seat for three also has three adjustable headrests as well as a fold-down center armrest. 
The dash features gloss black and silver accents and an instrument panel with high contrast meter and LCD type multi-information display which can be controlled by switches on the steering wheel. Standard comfort and convenience features include power windows, power door locks, bottle holders and door pockets and doors, cup holders, on floor console and rear center armrest, grab handles, sunglass holder, map lamp, day and night room mirror. The Strata Athlete comes with what Mitsubishi calls keyless operation system and smart keyless entry. There is a single zone automatic air conditioning system on the two-wheel drive, dual zone with rear air circulator on the four-wheel drive. The infotainment system features a 7-inch touchscreen display with AM, FM, GPS navigation, Bluetooth, auxiliary in and USB ports and mirror link. It plays through six speakers. There are also twin USB ports in the rear for charging gadgets. For those who still use them, there is a cigarette lighter as well as an ashtray. Parking the Strata pickup is no longer challenging with reverse camera on the athlete with the four-wheel drive also getting reverse sensors. The Strata is powered by a 2.4-liter Mivec intercooled and turbocharged direct injection diesel engine that generates 181 horsepower and 430 Nm of torque. The Strata Athlete is only available with a 6-speed automatic transmission complemented by Teptronic paddle shifters. The Athlete 4-wheel drive comes in Super Select 4-wheel drive with off-road mode. The suspension system is your standard front independent wishbone with cold spring and rigid elliptical leaf springs in the rear. The brake system features ventilated disc in front and leading trailing drums in the rear. The Strata comes standard with anti-lock brake system, electronic brake force distribution, and brake assist. Standard safety features also include driver and passenger side airbags, 3-point ELR seat belster 5, heater anchors and isofix, speed sensing door locks, laminated windshield. Black Series Strata Athlete two-wheel drive already comes with active stability and traction control, hill start assist and hill descent control. The four-wheel drive variant gets a fuller complement of driver assist functions that include hill descent control, forward collision mitigation system, ultrasonic misacceleration mitigation system, wide spot warning system and auto high beam. Full tank capacity is placed at 75 liters. Black Series edition of the Strata Athlete is all about the aesthetics. But it must be said that the athlete already has a full complement of interior convenience and safety features, as well as the power and handling expected in a good, reliable pickup truck. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis. Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you. Welcome back to Auto Focus. We now have the latest auto industry news. The Auto Focus Pre Christmas Test Drive Festival drew car buyers and enthusiasts to the Mall of Asia concert grounds to check out and compare the latest and best vehicles available in the market. Over the four days of the festival, participating automakers and distributors were busy fielding inquiries and providing test drives that led to solid chances for reservations and actual sales. 
confirming the belief of many automakers that the future of personal mobility is electric, many of those who crowded the booths of automakers inquired about and test drove full electric and hybrid vehicles. Peugeot chose to showcase the hybrid variants now available locally. The Nissan Leaf was among the most in-demand vehicle for test drives during festival. Also drawing a lot of inquiries and requests for test drive was the W5 of WM Motor Philippines. Over four days of Ford booth has busy fielding requests for test drives of the next generation Everest and the Ranger. Drawing crowds at the Mitsubishi booth of the Rally Art variants of the Montero Sport and the Strada. The Staria van and the Stargazer MPV were the stars of the Hyundai booth. With the Credit Compact SUV and the Tucson Midsize SUV also getting requests for drives. Chang'an also was visited a lot during the festival. Many wanted to discover the capabilities and comforts in the CS35 and the CS55. MG Motor showcased its edgy crossovers, the MG ZS and the HS, which also provided a lot of seat times for would-be buyers and just plain auto enthusiasts. The Subaru WRX proved irresistible to enthusiasts, so was the XV. Many wanted to experience Subaru's renowned boxer engines with symmetrical all-wheel drive tech. Also seemingly irresistible was the Jimny which saw cues forming at the Suzuki booth while the XL7 also got a share of the action on the test course. And it was the HRV which joined the Civic at the top two draws at the Honda Corner. The Cars Philippines has launched the all-new BRV, now looking more like an SUV while retaining the utility and comfort of a 7-seater compact MPV. The rollout was held at the posh city of dreams before members of media as well as Honda's partners in the banking and insurance sectors. The launch was also streamed over Honda's official Facebook page. Honda expects the all-new BRV with its new look and upgraded safety features to help boost its share of the local market in the coming year. This time, uh, we changed the old 
element of the scarf, exterior design and uh, interior design. Exterior looks like more SEO point and uh, bigger uh, body size and uh, high grand clearance. And interior, we still keep the utility space with seven seaters. With this uh, new model, we want to expand our market share and also we want to expand our volume. For the next year, we targeted 20,000 unit sales with 5% market share. Honda is making available four variants of the all-new BRV, all powered by the new 1.5-liter DOHCI VTEC engine with a maximum power of 121 PS and 145 Nm of torque. This includes one with manual transmission priced at 1.09 million pesos. Only the top-of-the-line all-new BRV 1.5 VXC VT comes with Honda Sensing, which is priced at 1.39 million pesos. With the introduction of this model, we would like to achieve a wider market share. No? And we are looking at about 800 to 900 units per month no? sales target for this model. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Who said happiness can only be found on the ground? Next generation Ford Ranger. Do the undone. Reserve yours now on Ford.com.ph or at your nearest Ford dealer. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our comparison of the latest automobile malls belong to the same category on Head to Head. In this edition of Head to Head, we fit the all-new Kia Sorento 2.2 SX 4x2 automatic transmission against the Toyota Fortuner GRS 2.8 4x4 AT in a spec-to-spec comparo. The seven-seater mid-size SUV is the vehicle that most Filipino families aspire to own. Mid-size SUVs provide the perfect balance of size, comfort, convenience, as well as versatility and utility, not to mention status. This is why there's a healthy competition among local car makers and distributors to roll out mid-size SUVs that provide all these attributes. Two examples are the Kia Sorento 2.2 SX 4x2 AT and Toyota Fortuner GRS 2.8 4x4 AT, both top end variants of the segment. The all new Sorento takes up a space that is 4,800mm long, 1,900mm wide, and 1,700mm tall, with a 2,815mm long wheelbase and minimum ground clearance of 176mm. The Fortuner GRS variant is listed at 4,795mm long. 1,855mm wide and 1,835mm tall with a 2,475mm long wheelbase. The Sorento 2.2 SX comes with LED multi-reflector headlamps and auto light control, and LED daytime running lights, front fog lamps, high mount stop lamp and rear combination lights. The Sorento SX features body color front and rear bumpers, side mirrors that power adjust incumbent integrated turn indicators, rear window defogger, chrome belt line molding and outside door handles as well as power tailgate. It rolls on sporty 19-inch alloy wheel strap by 235-55 R19 series tires. The Fortuner GRS gets the full Gazoo Racing-inspired design treatment, starting with the GR badge on mesh-type front grille with the bi-tone finish and the GR design 18-inch alloy wheels with the machine-cut finish wrapped by 265-60 R18 tires. It also comes with body-colored backdoor garnish and outside door handles, split-type LED headlamps, and LED daytime running lights with light guide, sequential front turn signal lamps, and front fog lamps. Rear LED combination lamps with line guide, sequential signal and bulb light, black and chrome door belt holding, 
front and rear mud guards, roof rail, and black outside view mirrors with welcome lamp and power just in full. The Sorento 2.2 SX does not lack in modern comfort and convenience features, starting off with the smart entry with push button and remote start function. The driver and front passenger enjoy leather upholstered 8-way power seats when cooling. The driver also benefits from 4-way lumbar support with memory. The second row seat splits, reclines, and slides 60-40 with one-touch button control as well as an armrest. The third row seat splits and folds 50-50 fully flat. Depending on how the second and third row seats are folded or configured, cargo space in the Sorento starts at a minimum of 357 liters to a maximum of 2,139 liters. The cabin features metallic and wood trim as well as satin silver inside door handles. Wrapped in leather are the gear shift knob and steering wheel that tilts and telescopes and comes in button and controls for audio, Bluetooth, multifunction display, cruise control, and lane control assist. The SX variant also features a 12.3 inch TFT LCD instrument panel that integrates speedometer, tachometer, rheostat, trip computer, and multifunction display. Standard comfort and convenience features include power windows, central door locks with auto locking function, duals on automatic air conditioning, console box with tray, electrochromic rear view mirror, glove box with illumination, map and room lamps, sun visors with vanity mirrors and ticket holder, multiple cup and beverage holders, three USB charging ports, and 12 volt 180 watt outlets in rear console and luggage area. The Ford Tudor GRS features the GR badge on the leather wrapped steering wheel, which tilts and telescopes and comes in paddle shifter and controls for the multi information display and cruise control. The cabin welcomes passengers with suede and leather upholstery for a seat and trim, as well as silver smoke metallic, matte carbon, and red stitching accents. The driver and front seat passenger enjoy 8 way power adjusting seats. The second row seats for three split 60 40, slides and reclines and comes in one touch tumble function, as well as center armrest. The third row seat reclines and splits 50 50. Other comfort and convenience features include smart keyless entry and push start system, dual zone automatic climate control, as well as power windows with auto up and down function, and jam protection, speed sensing door locks, power tailgate with kick sensor, glove box, cool box, 10 cup and bottle holders, room and door courtesy lamps, and two 12 volt accessory outlets. The all-new Sorento is powered by Kia's Smart Stream 2.2-liter diesel engine with common rail direct injection and variable geometry turbo technology. The 2,151cc inline four-cylinder engine generates a maximum 202 PS at 3,800 revolutions per minute and 441 Nm of torque from 1,750 to 2,750 RPM. This is made with the Kia's Smart Stream 8-speed dual-clutch transmission that sends power and torque to the front wheels. It comes in four drive modes, Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Smart, easily selected using the rotary knob on the central console. The Sorento suspension system uses McPherson struts in front and a multi-link system in the rear. The brake system uses this on all four wheels. The Ford Tudor GRS is powered by a 2,755cc four-cylinder inline 16-valve DOHE diesel engine with a variable nozzle turbo and air-cooled intercooler that generates 204 PS and 500 Nm of torque. This is made into a 6-speed automatic transmission and 4x4 drivetrain that comes with differential lock with auto disconnect function. The GRS also comes with two drive modes, Eco and Sport. The Ford Tudor GRS suspension features monotube shock absorbers for the double wish boats up front and a multi-link system in the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs on all four wheels along with GR brake calipers. Kia equipped the Sorento with the latest in safety and driving assist technologies that include anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, downhill brake control, hill start assist and trailer stability assist and cruise control. The Sorento SX comes with blind spot view monitor, lane keeping assist, forward collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic alert, 360 degree surround view monitor and front and rear parking sensors. Other standard Sorento safety features are front, side, and curtain airbags. 3-point ELR seat bolster 7 with driver and front seat passenger also getting pre-tensioners, and child locks and isofix child anchors on the second and third row seats. The GRS is equipped with Toyota Safety Sense, an advanced collision prevention system that includes pre-collision system, lane departure alert, and adaptive cruise control as well as blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Also comes with anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, vehicle stability control with traction control, hill start assist, 3-point ELR seat belts for 7, with seat belt reminder and pre-tensioner and adjustable seat belt anchors for driver and front passenger, child restraint system using isofix and heater anchors, child lock and rear doors, the Toyota vehicle security system featuring an immobilizer and alarm, as well as panoramic view monitor and front and rear clearance and sonars. Both the Kia Sorento 2.2 4x2 SX AT 
and the Toyota Fortuner 2.8 GRS 4x4 AT offer much in how they are spec, fitted, and finished. Which would you rather? Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis. Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. Nissan has launched the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power, a timely addition to the local lineup as we are now living in the era of rising fuel prices, and a vehicle that is equipped with a game-changing technology to pave the way for the future of electric mobility. Nissan is one of the leading pioneers in electric personal mobility. Among the first to roll out a full battery-powered passenger sedan, the LEAF, to the global market, Nissan leads the way towards the dream of a world no longer dependent on fossil fuel. At this time, the automotive industry is betting on electric vehicles as the future of personal mobility. In the Philippines, Nissan is looking to bring that dream to reality by making the LEAF available while at the same time helping develop the infrastructure that would support widespread use of EVs. To help build the future of electrification, Nissan has launched the electric Vivid gas-charged subcompact SUV, the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power. So the all-new uh, Nissan Kicks e-Power is our new launch. This is one of our one of most amazing products. This has been very successful worldwide and even in Japan, when today is 36% of our sales. We have sold more than half a million vehicles already with the technology e-power and now it's coming to the Philippines with our new product that is the all-new Kicks. The all-new Nissan Kicks e-power is a subcompact SUV crossover with a unique powertrain developed by Nissan. We are bringing an electric motor driven also but it's fueled by gas. So what is that? It has the best of the two worlds. It has the torque and that means the power, but also has the fuel efficiencies. And this is amazing. This is, you can go to 900 or 1,000 kilometers with one tank. The Nissan Kicks e-Power is a 100% electric motor-driven vehicle that does not require plug-in charging. The Nissan e-Power system lets you experience an exciting 100% electric drive without the need for plug-in charging. Its gasoline engine is used primarily to charge the battery for the electric motor that drives the wheel, just like a generator. Moreover, the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power offers instant torque and excellent mileage, perfect in these days of high fuel prices. 
the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power can have fuel efficiency of 22 kilometers per liter on combined city and highway conditions based on the UNR 101 testing, but actual consumption may vary depending on different driving conditions and habits, of course. To give you a clear picture here, that means I can drive from Alabang to QC and vice versa for taping and all other kinds of work three times a week and only top up on gas once a month. This kind of mileage translates to around 48% fuel savings compared to SUVs in comparative segments. Another concern is that electrified vehicles can compare in size, performance, comfort and convenience and high-tech features of regular cars or SUVs have steep SRPs. Thicker prices for the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power starts at 1,209,000 pesos, which makes Nissan's subcompact crossover SUV a very compelling and exciting entry to electrified vehicles in the country. It's a very, very good investment with the advanced technology that it offers. The price point of Nissan Kicks e-Power is definitely a catch. It's very, very good. It's very competitive in the market, and you can get the most value of your money and a worry-free vehicle because of its superior Japanese quality and innovative and of course it's exciting tech. Owning the all-new Nissan Kicks e-Power also provides other benefits. Apart from the innovative e-Power system, what I like most about it is its Nissan Intelligent Mobility features uh, which give me more confidence to experience thrill on the road. I can easily get in and out of tight parking spots with the intelligent around view monitor with moving object detection since it gives me a 360 degree bird's eye virtual composite of my surroundings. So it's talaga perfect and safe. One of the most innovative features of the Kicks e-Power is its e-pedal step, which activates when you switch to eco and sport mode. It allows you to accelerate and decelerate using only the accelerator pedal. This is great for stop and go city driving. The electronic parking brake adds to the Kicks e-Power safety. You can easily engage and disengage the brake with a switch located right here in the center console. Using the auto hold function, you can also disengage the electronic parking brake by stepping on the brake or accelerator pedal. The number one benefit is that you look amazing inside the car. Everyone is turning their head just to look at you. The most important is that you are driving and you are experiencing the electric feeling. That is unique. You can only have it with the new World Kicks, with the Kicks. It's only you can feel it with that. And I invite everyone to come and visit our dealers and try the Kicks e-Power. I can stay here and explain it for two hours, but the only way that you will understand what we're trying to say is that you come and test our vehicles. So thank you very much. Feel the excitement. All new Nissan Kicks e Power. Nissan Philippines appears to have a winner in the all new Nissan Kicks e Power. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best selling sedan you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS, bring on the thrill. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. This edition of Car Review checks out Volkswagen's entry in the subcompact SUV segment, the T-Cross SE. Volkswagen Philippines brought in the T-Cross to join the melee in the subcompact SUV market. 
The T-Cross arrived in the country with some confidence after selling over 300,000 units worldwide, just some two years since being launched back in 2018. Volkswagen must have done something right with the T-Cross to convince more than 300,000 people from over 55 countries to bring one home in so short a time. The T-Cross looks good from all angles. Volkswagen designers seem to have hit the sweet spot of sporty, conventional, and distinctive in its latest SUV. Sharp character lines, just the right amount of chrome for grille and bumper, and top and exterior functionalities. Volkswagen Philippines brought in two variants of the German brand's latest SUV, the T-Cross S and the T-Cross SE. The S only gets halogen headlights while the SE gets the LED. The SE also gets daytime running lights and front fog lamp with corner light function and rear fog lamps. The electric outside rear view mirrors double as side turn lamps. The front wipers have intermittent control. Roof rails add functionality. Rear spoiler adds to sporty look. Also quite sporty are the alloy wheels, 16-inch rims with 205-60R16 tires for the S and 17-inch for the SE with 205-55R17 tires. At 4,218mm long, 1,760mm wide, and 1,599mm tall, with a 2,651mm wheelbase, the T-Cross straddles the narrow divide between subcompact and compact category. This allows Volkswagen Philippines to price the Philippines spec T-Cross in the subcompact category while offering compact segment interior dimensions helped along by the longest wheelbase in chosen segment. Getting into the T-Cross SE is as easy as putting the key fob in pocket. Volkswagen calls it Propriety System Kessie Entry Go. Inside, one gets to realize the T-Cross has roomy interiors for an SUV in its class. The seats in the SE use a combination of leather and fabric upholstery with stitching that matches exterior colors of the T-Cross. This is carried over to the color of the interior panel. The driver's seat adjusts six ways but only manually. The front passenger seat adjusts four ways. Between the front seats is an armrest that slides and adjusts for height. Look up and one finds a panoramic sunroof, something that's getting popular these days. The dash and instrumentation feature a multi-function display, while ambient light adds some atmosphere to riding in the T-Cross. Other comfort and convenience features include air conditioning with pollen filter and rear vent, one touch up and down power windows, and central door locking. The T-Cross comes with a multi-function steering wheel that has controls for, among other things, cruise control and the audio system. The infotainment system on the SE comes with 9.2-inch touchscreen display, Apple CarPlay compatibility, hand gesture control, and four speakers. There are also 12-volt sockets and USB ports for front and rear seat passengers. T-Cross brought in the country's powered by 1,498cc four-cylinder engine that generates 113 PS and 145 Nm of torque. The engine drives the front wheels via a six-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission with smart mode that gives the driver some control over gear shifts. Volkswagen claims the T-Cross can maintain 0 to 100 km per hour in 13.3 seconds and a top speed of 185 km per hour. This should be good enough for daily use in city traffic and should also make for a fun drive in countryside roads. Independent front McPherson struts and semi-independent composite torsion beam in the rear absorb road imperfections with little drama. While the brake system using this on all four wheels, ventilated in front, provide confident stopping power. Helping out in this is the anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution. Driving on hilly terrains or wet conditions is made easier with driver assist technology in the T-Cross that includes hill hold control, anti-slip regulation, electronic stabilization program. For safety, there are driver and front seat passenger airbags, side airbags, head curtains, 3-point ELR seat belts, and ISOFIX teethers. Parking is also made easier and safer with rear parking distance control and rear camera. Finally, the Volkswagen T-Cross also comes with immobilizer and tire pressure monitor. Volkswagen Philippines reports that T-Cross got a good reception from SUV buyers following its local introduction. This bodes well for Volkswagen as we head deeper into the holiday season. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Allopedia.
Hi, this is Sydney, and today we're gonna talk about turbos and boost controllers. Chances are when you buy a diesel car nowadays, it has a turbocharger. It's not exclusive anymore to high performance cars like Subarus or Evos or racing cars. Almost every turbo diesel on sale now from any manufacturer has one of these things. And that's why they're great and they do make a lot of power and a lot of torque. Now this turbocharger sucks in air here, pumps it, air goes out here. And this air has pressure in it. The same way that in your mom's pressure cooker, when you reach a certain pressure, the whistle sounds. In the turbocharger, there's a similar mechanism that tells you that, or actually tells the engine that, okay, pressure is right, let's set it at that and don't go any higher. It's this thing, this is called a wastegate. Inside here is a diaphragm that goes forward and backward. What it does is connects to this lever, which opens and closes this flap. Once the pressure goes here, it's correct, it will push this lever out and this flap will open, bleeding off some of the exhaust gases. Now, there's a way to increase the boost, which is using a boost controller. And it's this little thing. Basically what this is, this is a valve. Air goes here, air goes out there. This little knob restricts how much pressure it goes in here. So if you blow here, you twist it, only little air comes out here or a lot of air comes out here, delaying the signal to open and close the wastegate. And this thing simply just installs in between pressure side here and the wastegate. So the simplest is this goes here, this goes here. That goes there. That's the simplest way to go about it. Or the other way that they recommend is to a little bit more complicated but can do a little bit more precise is this way. In a nutshell, this is how it's connected. So how this works is this. There's pressure inside this line that goes to the wastegate. What we're doing here is we're bleeding some of the pressure off here. So let's say this one comes out at 14 PSI. But since you're letting out some of the pressure here, pressure that goes here is less, maybe 12. So here you're bleeding one, two, three, maybe four PSI. By adjusting this knob here, there's a plus and a minus here. The plus and minus here don't mean anything. It does not mean one click is one PSI, two click is two PSI, no. Every car is different, every turbocharger behaves differently, so the only way for you to properly adjust this is if you have a working and accurate boost gauge that's installed in your car, or you have it brought to a dyno, so you can see if the adjustments that you're making are making power indeed, and if it's enough, because this one here will now connect to the boost sensor of the dyno itself. Now when you open your engine, most people can identify some of the basic parts like this is the air filter, this is where you put in the oil, that's the battery, but that's pretty much it. And for turbo diesel cars, like on this Montero where we're going to install the boost controller, this is your turbo down here. That's the turbocharger right there, this is the compressor side, that's the turbine side or the exhaust. The wastegate is actually down here, this rod here, that's where the wastegate is. That's what controls how much boost pressure is enough and then it opens the flap. So all the air the car gets comes from here, the air box. Then once it goes in, it gets burned, exhaust gas goes out here. And this is where we're going to install the boost controller. <laughs> so this is the boost controller installed. It's just this little thing, then later on once we're finished setting it, we're going to secure it here somewhere with a zip tie and then here this is a lock nut we will tighten this so no makulit car wash boys gonna make me hit this when they do a car wash because if they do it'll mess up your boost settings so here there's a plus and a minus we start here by making the knob all the way to the minus so this basically stock boost then we'll slowly rotate it to the plus side while watching on the dyno how much boost we actually get now as you can see, we have the boost controller on one side, then we have this thing connected to the dyno. This is where the ECU reads boost. This is in the manifold, and it goes to this sensor. This thing's called a manifold absolute pressure sensor. This converts pressure into voltage that the ECU can understand. And this is what also it references, let's say, okay, at two volts, 
it's this much pressure at 3 volts, it's this much pressure, therefore we give this much fuel and that much fuel. And that's how it works. That's our feature in Allopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's all the focus this week. We hope you have found this edition of our Electronic Automobile Magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.